I think the profession of interior design has evolved quite a bit uh, since 1974 when CIDQ, then NCIDQ, was formed. In the late 1960s, interior design as a profession had no educational accreditation, no universally recognized professional apprenticeship, no unanimously accepted certification examination, and that's how it all started. In 1970, interior designers were not licensed in the profession, and the profession was in great need of setting standards and great need of not being called decorators and being called designers. One of the early things that we had to do, and we brought a group of people together to do it, is to develop a definition of an interior designer. interior design, the closest credentialing option available was membership in a professional design association. In 1974, NCIDQ administered its first qualifying examination. I was coordinating the job analysis study when I was VP of NCIDQ. When we did that job analysis study, it integrated all parts of the things that needed to be addressed, and some of those parts affected educational standards, and some of those parts affected licensing standards. There was a U.S. Act enacted to address barrier-free design and people that had disabilities. And when it reached into the commercial arena, it became more detailed. As you got into more technical information, you needed more qualifications. So what happened in our profession, as things got more specialized, people started specializing to be able to have the knowledge and expertise to design them. were able to roll out the computerized practicum exam, which enabled us to then be able to expand the testing window to a full month twice a year, and to be able to offer the exam globally in 73 countries. When we pivoted to offer remote proctored testing as well, that further just increased access for candidates to the exam. We see the NCIDQ certification as a requirement by many of the clients that we work for. Through that evolution and continuing to maintain the certification to align to that, the general public is going to continue to recognize that we are that type of design professional that, that holds that quality and caliber. So the public benefits when interior designers can practice to the full extent of their capabilities. We joined ASID and IIDA to form the Consortium for Interior Design, a group that is collaborating to advance interior design legislation to recognize interior designers as design professionals. We're really seeing sort of a unique movement and progress that I'm very excited about. We have been setting up some new frameworks for the goals um, of the organization moving forward for CIDQ. The global outreach and uh, universal regulation are really top of mind, top of focus. We are seeing more jurisdictions who are updating and modernizing to expand the scope of practice rights for interior designers. We have gained new jurisdictions which have added regulation for interior design and more and more are actively considering that right now. I think we're well on the path to a time in which interior designers will be legally recognized as design professionals throughout the U.S. and Canada. 
CIDQ, the staff, the board of directors had decided that one of the really kind of passionate initiatives that we wanted to try to promote and encourage and support was the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Scholarship. That was developed to address what is a long-standing lack of diversity amongst not only our certificate holders, but the profession itself. This year, we're going to be rolling out digital badging, which I think enables uh, our certificate holders to demonstrate to employers, their peers, and others their performance and accomplishments. So in the last 50 years, over 36,000 people have earned the NCIDQ certificate. The NCIDQ exam is known and recognized around the globe. There is a designation and a delineation in the path to their certification and we have really embraced the rigor and requirements around that. I was able to work with a lot of committed designers who wanted to make the overall profession much better and therefore the lives of thousands of people who benefited from the results. That's a really great legacy.